Bruchim Aboyim. We are now on the eighth lecture on the Pesach Agora. And we are up to the uh, next category of terminology, the Areu Hosanna HaMitzrim, and the uh, Egyptians uh, dealt evil with us, Vinanum, they afflicted us, Vitlan Avodakasha, and they gave us hard work. So what does it mean, Vya Reu Osanu? And they uh, dealt badly with us. So the word Vya Reu, it has the word Rea, which is a friend. So what this alludes to is the fact that the exile began by the Egyptians acting friendly towards the nation of Israel. And this deceptive tactic was followed by the, afflict, by the affliction. Um, and then it says, and God treated them, meter connected meter. One of the questions that are asked, we know that Moshe goes to Paro, he tells Paro that he, the Jews want to leave for three days to serve God. That was the pretext. And how could that happen? After all, they were going to leave permanently. And the answer given is that, again, here, when the Egyptians wanted to enslave the Jewish nation, again, they used deceptive tactics. So again, all that goes around comes around. God treats a person the way he acts. So again, so that began with Fayira, as them acting as friends and, make, and, and kind of drawing the Jews into this slavery. Now, it should say, Osun, instead of Osanu, us, should, should say Lanu, we. means that they made us bad and we learn from their evil ways. Uh, the first one was the Bechida. And this becomes important. So what happened was that there's a saying that if you go into a perfume shop and buy nothing, you come out smelling better. Same as with an outhouse. So by being around the Egyptians, we took on their evil ways. And this became the problem. The Ira Osanu, they made us evil. By being around them, we took on their negative traits, not just as far as serving idols, but also in all negative ways. And uh, the al Sheikh says, Hilcha uh, Bincha was the one before, uh, the al Sheikh says that they accused uh, us of ingratitude for their warm hospitality. And this propaganda made us look like the evil ones. The Chazam Sofer states that uh, destroying a person's reputation is a great evil in itself, okay, again, based on good treasuries. So again, they made us look bad in all ways and made us bad. And it continues and it uses the term Vie Ra'u, Hosanu HaMitzram, and again, they made us bad. Commotion Amar, as it says, Havon Nismach Lo, let us act wisely against him. Pen Yirbe, at least they will increase, meaning grow. Vayaki Kren, and it'll be they will come, Milchama, a war, where Nosef Gamhu al they will join with our enemies, and Nilcham Banu, a war against us. But all the menorahs will go up from the land. Again, this is what the Egyptians said. Now, what's interesting is, Havan Nishak Malo is him. Let's deal wise with him. It should be with them. Why him? They tried to outsmart him, meaning the one and only God. And they said, Pen, least they will multiply. And God said, Ken, Cain, so shall they multiply. Uh, trying to fool God is not a wise thing to do. Usually backfires. Also, the actual slavery began uh, low, of which is also Levi. When Levi died, low was 36. That he died that the 36 years, they were cunningly plotted to subjugate the Jewish nation and decimate them. Uh, in fact, the only reason why the tribe of Levi themselves were not part of the Shebut, were not part of the servitude, is that Levi was able to outsmart them when on that day when they tried to get the Jews to lay the bricks. Levi, old man Levi, was still alive. And when they were about to go, he said, where are you going? And they said, to lay the bricks. And he said, you have nothing to do with this. And he was the last of the brothers to live. So he stopped the tribe from going. They never became slaves. And again, the importance of elders and following elders. Again, that what decimated American Jewry and Jewry in the world by Hitler killing our grandparents and then all of the pogroms turning people away and their parents going after money and then losing that basis of what Judaism is all about, of that Zayda, of that old grandfather that helps us become what we need to be. And it continues, the Anur, and they afflicted us, commotion Amar, as it says, via Simulav, sorry, miss him. And they put upon us uh, the uh, 
tax the tax collectors and taskmasters. Um, the man on those of us have lost them in order to afflict them with their burdens. They even already mixed those to Paro and they made uh, these uh, cities for Paro, Pisos and Ramses. Now, let me be on Nunu and they afflicted us. That this alludes to the word Ona. Ona is a marital duty of relations between husband and wife, one of the three things that a husband is, is, is requested to give to his wife, called Ona. And disruption, this was, so they brought about a disruption of marital, of family life based on the Elias Haggadah. Also, why both affliction and hard work? Said, so it says, because they first taxed us heavily. You have to remember, the Jews were at the top of the caste system as long as Yosef was alive. And it says, they, they, but he mali ma'od ma'od. And they multiplied greatly a double term. And we know in the Shema, when we say the word ma'odecha means wealth, money. So they were very wealthy. So the servitude first started on their money by taxing the Jews more heavily. And then it came to their bodies. Um, and then when they could no longer pay the taxes, they were forced into servitude based on a grow. And it continues and it says, Pis, why piss by Yusimo love and placed upon them? It should say alehem on them. Why plural? A love is singular. That initially even Paro himself came out and laid bricks to trick the nation of Israel into slavery. In fact, he had a chain, a gold chain with a brick on it. And this was a symbol of, again, national patriotism. We as Jews are always the first ones to march. Uh, in the South, it was that way. Uh, Jews are always part of, uh, of the liberal society. Even today, Jews are highly democratic. Uh, it's amazing how we uh, fall into these traps all the time and learn nothing. And these two cities, Pisos, Pisom, and Ramses, why were they mentioned? So first, it goes back even to the time when uh, Yehuda and the brothers came to Egypt. And then when the viceroy Yosef took Binyamin, that Yehuda let out a, a war cry. And it was so fierce, Medrash says, that the two cities of Pisos and Ramses were demolished. That, just from the, from the cry that he let out. So also it says they were built on a fault. So that they were built and then it had to be came, be, being rebuilt because they were t being destroyed because of the fault. So the Egyptians really gave them this work, work without purpose. And again, this is another, we'll see the word befarach that I'll be talking about in the next portion of useless work which takes a person's heart away. It says, v'yitnu alanu vota, caution, they gave us hard labor, as it says, v'yabedim and shrimp, and all befarach. And what does befarach mean? Again, it's with difficult work, but also perach, a soft mouth. As we mentioned that they began the servitude with deception. Some say they even paid the nation of Israel to work and then they turned it into slavery. Also, they gave men women's work, and women's work men, men's work, women and men's work. Uh, again, as we said before, work without meaning. Uh, the Germans would do that. They'd have people dig pits and then fill them. It takes a person's heart away. Um, if a person has a purpose to what he does, it helps him to survive, you know, no matter what he does. If even if you're working in a munitions factory, uh, the rabbis, uh, Father-in-law made, uh, it was a tailor, he made uniforms. But whatever you do, if at least you can see a finished product, it gives you some pride as a person. Um, story told of a man who was sentenced to push a, a mill, and he did that for 20 years. Just kept walking around pushing the mill, and he asked what he was doing, and they told him he was grinding wheat. And it gave him a sense of purpose. And when he was freed, he walked to the other side, and there was nothing there. The man died of a broken heart, he took his heart away. It becomes very important. A person needs purpose in life. And that's what they took away. It wasn't even purposeful work. And it says, Venitzak El Hashem Elokeavosenu, we cried out to the God of our fathers, Yishra Hashem is Kolenu. God heard our voice, the Arasanyun, and our affliction, Vyasamalenu, and our toil, Lakosenu, and our oppression. And so, again, so what, is, what does this all mean? That and he heard Kolenu, our voice. So number one is we, God, we cried out to the God of our fathers. We need to know, why were we chosen as Jews? Are we really that special? And we see that um, when Yisrael comes out to the desert uh, to see the wisdom of a non-Jew, 
uh, we're not the smartest of people or the best of people. What makes us so special is the fact of our grandfathers, of our Zaydas, that the forefathers accepted God. And the reason why we have been chosen is in their merit. So they turn to that ace in the hole, so to speak. They cried out to the God, the Lord God of their fathers, of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. And what does it say? Yishma Hashem es koleno, God heard their voice, not prayer. It doesn't say Yishma es tefilosenu, but what should be prayer. Koleno is a voice. In fact, the blessing that we're given is kol kol Yaakov. The voice is the voice of Yaakov. That the, when a child cries out, a parent hears and a parent runs to help, regardless whether the child needs it or not, or deserves it. That's not the criteria. A parent is a parent and a child is a child. There's an emotional bond between the two. So when we turn to God, what he hears is koleno, our voice, even without prayer. Just because our relationship with God is b'ni b'chari Yisrael, my firstborn of, of, of Israel. Also, they felt undeserving to receive God's help. And so they asked in the name of the forefathers. But God answered them because of their humility and because of their own voices based on opinion shuyim. Again, that becomes a relationship with God Almighty, with the Father, our King. And it continues as Amo'aleinu, uh, and said, Nitzach al Hashem, and we cried out to the God of our fathers, as it says, it was after many days, and the king of Egypt died. Now, it's interesting that the gematri of that the king of Egypt died, is the same gematri as Mitzora, a leopard, 926. Uh, so, this is only figurative. He contracted leprosy, which is like death, because we know that since there is no title after death, as we see with David HaMelech, that uh, on the day he died, he was no longer called David HaMelech, the king. He was only called David, just by his name. The title was lost. And so over here, it says, V'yamas Melech Mitzrayim, the fact that he calls him a king, means he was still alive, but he, con he contracted this leprosy. Now, he had, his astrologist told him, that they saw in the stars, they tried every cure, and he was getting worse, that the only thing that would cure him would be if he bathed in the blood of young children. And what he did is he had 150 Jewish children killed in the morning, another 150 at night, and he bathed in their blood. And God, in his mercy, cured his leprosy to save the nation of Israel based on the heritage uh, Haggadah. Now, it's very strange. So God cured Paro, to save the Jews. Why not, why not, why cure Paro to save the Jews? Why not just kill Paro? Then you save the Jews. That makes a whole lot more sense. And the answer is that somehow, some way, and also the question why they didn't leave Egypt. That's also a question, even during the times of darkness, even when they could have left, the Egyptians were immobile for six days. So somehow, somehow, some way, somehow, the relationship between Paro and the nation of Israel was a relation between a mother and its fetus. And anything that affects the mother affects the fetus. And so God had to cure Paro in order to save the nation of Israel. So how do we see that as a reality? It's, it's really something very strange. But we see when the Jews went into the sea, there really was no purpose to it. When we th most people think about the crossing of the Red Sea, we think of crossing. So when you cross something, you go from one point A to point B, you go across it, which is not what happened. According to most Midrashim, the Jews went in on one side and came out on the exact same side. So in reality, what they did is they made a half circle. They went into the sea and came out of the sea. So what was the purpose? So one purpose was to drown the Egyptians. But, and not only that, there's no other time throughout this saving of the Jewish nation the salvation that they sang to God. The only time they sang the Az Yashir, this great song that we say every day in prayer, was when they came out, off out on the other side of the sea. That's when they sang praise to God. So the sea, like a baby, a baby's born through water. And the sea, this half circle, is really the shape of the birthing canal. So when the Jews entered the sea, they entered through the moment. Again, this was the most difficult moment for them as a mother who's giving birth, a child being born. Birth is very difficult. 
and the fact that they entered into the sea and they came out through the sea on the other side, so they then separated from the mother, from, from the Egyptian, from Paro, and were born as a free nation on the other side. So that becomes the reason why, again, the God cured the Yamas Melchus, the king of Egypt, who had leprosy. So this to save the Jews and then to separate them at the birth at the crossing of the sea. Said the young when they saw him in Avoda and Vyasaku, and then the Jews were relieved from their work and they cried out, Fatal Shavas, Sam El Lukim and Avoda, and they prayed to God again, cried out because of their servitude. Now, what's interesting is that the word Avoda is mentioned twice, which is servitude. From the fact that the Egyptians forced the nation of Israel to serve, Avoda is also the service of idols. So, again, so all of this was forced upon them uh, by the Egyptians. It continues with the words, Vishma Hashem is Koleno, again, God heard our voices, Kamosh and Amar. Vishma Lokim is not Kosum, God heard their cries, Vishma is Riso, is Avram Yisav Yaakov. And God remembered the covenant between Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, God heard Elohim. Again, there are seven main names to God that we can't erase. And the word Elohim is, has the same gematria as the word nature. Uh, the Torah begins with the word um, voracious bar Elohim, God created in the beginning. And this form of God is, again, nature is connected to it. It's also din, which is judgment. In fact, on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, we ask God, God created the world as a world of judgment. And we ask God to step, to move from his throne of judgment that he sits on all the time. And during the Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, to move to his throne of mercy, the yud ke vav ke. So why the God of Din over here of judgment? The answer is because according to judgment, Din, God made a promise to the forefathers to save the nation of Israel. This would be the natural occurrence of true justice. Also, that God always helps to pursue and this is a mida, this is an attribute of din, based on the uh, commentaries here. Also, it says in Devarim, in the Sedrisky Sabo, the same verses are repeated, but the name of God of mercy is used there instead of the God of judgment. Because many times what, 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 when we are going through an experience, we perceive it as a judgment of God, Elohim, only to find out in hindsight that it was really the God of mercy, the Yud Kei Bafai Kei, according to the Elias Hagoda, which becomes very important. And it continues and it says, Viar es on Yenu, and he saw our affliction, Zu Precious Derech Eretz, this is a separation of uh, that which is in the way of the world, Kemoshin Nam, or Be'ad Lokim, and Yisrael, V'yed Lokim, and the God saw his children Israel, and they knew God. So, what again, so what does this mean? So when it says, V'yed Elohim, they knew God, this alludes to marital relations, that God gave them the strength and the desire for procreation. Again, based on the Barbanel, part of the scheme of the Egyptians was to make them so tired that they would not have time or desire to procreate, to have children. Uh, we see that in the Torah it says, Adam yadas chavo ishto, the man knew chava his wife, so the, the, so the word to yeda, to know, as it says over here, v'yeda alukim, it deals with, again, an allusion to a euphemism to marital relations. So God encouraged them, gave them the strength to do so. And again, we know the righteous women who went out to the fields to seduce their husbands in the apple orchard. Again, the connection to charosis, which is the basis of, which the basis of apples. Again, an allusion to that. Vesamalenu, and our affliction, elo habanim, Moshe Namar, this is the children, as it mentions, called the Benayil, all the male children would be thrown into the Nile, Kalabas the Chayun, and all the daughters would be kept alive. Now, the uh, ch why children are, it says that they're a burden. The children are a burden, mean trying to help them grow properly and to become B'nai Torah, to become proper Torah observant Jews, and just to become good people. It's a struggle for parents. Uh, again, also the financial pressures. Uh, it's amazing. Today, there's a real movement not to have children. And there's, there's a logic to it. Uh, once you have children, you become slaves to them in the sense of all of your hopes, your dreams you know, work. People have to work harder. You have to save more money. Um, 
again today, college and everything else, braces, name it. Uh, there's, it's, it's really, it's endless. Um, and many times today as we see that parents are still helping older children, uh, older children moving back in parents' houses, being helping them with, with, with their financial needs, grandparents helping their grandchildren. Uh, it never ends. Uh, it becomes something that, that is constant. So again, not only that, it's interesting. There are those who say that anyone who has children doesn't go to Gehenna, doesn't go to purgatory, to hell. Uh, he already has it in life. So uh, it becomes part of what it is. So there's the good and the bad. What we manage to do is we see the good side, thank God. And that helps us with what we have to do. Um, and it says also that every daughter should live. This is extra. To tell us that killing someone spiritually is compared to physical death and even worse. After all, the, 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 the women were allowed to live. It's an interesting thing that when Napoleon um, attacked uh, Russia, the Tsar was a rabid anti-Semite. And Napoleon offered the Jews freedom, equal rights. And yet, almost every Hasidic master in, in Russia backed the Tsar. It's very strange. You would think they would have backed Napoleon. In fact, the Alter Rebbe was a great opponent to, to Napoleon. Because what they saw Napoleon doing, giving, is Napoleon giving the Jews freedom of body and then losing their, their spirituality. So it's, again, what we're concerned about is the two lives we have and the one that comes after this one is eternity. So the Tsar may have been persecuting the physical bodies of the Jews, but their spirituality was strong. It's interesting, when things are bad, Jews are religious. That's when things are good, that they find no need for God. There's no atheist in the foxhole. So, again, we have over here also that all the Jews, all the women living, again, was even worse in the sense of to have their spirituality being taken away from them. Um, and which is also interesting is that this would not have ended Judaism because Judaism is based on women. So as long as they let the women live, Judaism would have continued. What would have ended is kingship and the, sp the spiritual leaders of the priests because that follows the, the, the male, male uh, um, partner. And uh, what's interesting about that is that both Miriam and Yochebed, her mother, saved the boys, uh, did not kill them at birth. And the kingship follows the lineage through Miriam and the priesthood through Yochebed. Since they, these were houses, it says God made houses for them. These houses remained since they kept them alive. They were given the merit of these houses. This and uh, again, their their pain over here, their oppression, uh, as it says, zehat chak. This is the oppression, motion Amar, as it says, gamrizi lakatz yimitzrayim lokatz yimosodz. I also see the uh, pressure, the oppression that, that the Egyptians put on them. Now, when it talks about hadchak, something being forced and then pushed, hadchak has a uh, numerical value of 117. Why is that important? There's a debate as to how many years the Jews actually, actually spent in actual servitude. And we know even within the 210 years, 80 of those years were attributed to when Yosef was alive. So then, as I said, it was good to be a Jew. Yosef was the viceroy in this caste system that the Egyptians followed. The Jews were at the top. They were part of nobility. So there are those who say that the servitude lasted for 117 years. That number is derived from the fact, again, everything is tit for tat, mita kanita, negin mita, that you had nine brothers who sold Yosef into slavery. Yosef was a slave and incarcerated for 13 years while he was in Egypt. So if you take, there were only nine brothers who had participated in the sale of Yosef, 9 times 13 is 117. So to make up for these 117 years of the nine brothers, some say that's why the servitude was for 117 years. Also, they grew at such a miraculous pace that Goshen became overcrowded, basically a slum based on the growth. And that again became a problem. And that's also why, if you think about it, we call the holiday Pesach which means God skipped over the houses. Well, if they all lived in Goshen, there was nothing to skip over. It would just be Goshen. But the fact that there were so many that they moved within Egypt proper. And again, this is also how they were also influenced by being in neighborhoods. In fact, if the, if the conservative party, a conservative 
part of Judaism had it to do again, they would not allow driving on Shabbos. Because if you don't drive on Shabbos, you form Jewish neighborhoods. Once you drive, you can live anywhere. And then what you do is become, begin to assimilate. And again, this is where the reform movement has such power. Again, you can come from anywhere in any place. Once you have neighborhoods, then you become more Jewish and stay. This way you, you go to school, with, even you go to public school. You go to school with Jewish kids. You, you have your friends are Jewish. You marry Jewish. And this becomes the important thing. Again, there's two ways to wipe out Judaism. One is with the sword, but the other is with kindness. And the kindness is sometimes more devastating. And it continues with the words. Uh, but now we have three terms here. Anyenu, which is our which is our cries, and Lachatzenu, uh, our burden, Lachatzenu, our oppression. These three things hasten the redemption by 190 years, which we know is a gematria of the word kates. So the Egyptians worked the nation of Israel day and night to prevent them from having relations. So again, that, that cut the time of 400 years in half. Also, the nation of Israel had many more children than was natural, giving Paro many more slaves than normal. Another reason for the redemption being hastened. And also, that the severity of the oppression was so intense that the reduced time equaled 400 years of normal servitude that it should have been based on the Chukas HaTorah. It continues with the... Um, and God took us out with a strong hand, with an outstretched arm, with, uh, with, with wonders and with great awe and signs and wonders. And also God took us out. It says, the words again, that says, Loi de Malach, not to an angel. Now, that God did not allow the angel, meaning the angel of death, to kill even those who would have died natural deaths based on a groan. And it continues, not on a fiery angel. Again, there are different types of angels. And also not through a messenger. Only God in his uh, honor and by himself. Again, it says in Shmos, he will not permit the Malach HaMavis, the angel of death, to enter your home to smite you. The question becomes, why mention this if God himself carried out the plague? And the answer is, again, this refers, again, as we mentioned, to the natural deaths that any Jew who was naturally supposed to die on the night of the going out of Egypt, okay, on this night, no one died, for, no Jew died from any car, any cause. Uh, again, from the and also had uh, the agents of divine justice been used, then they would have punished the nation of Israel along with the Egyptians, since they had no merit. As the sea said to God, these are idol worshippers and these are idol worshippers. In fact, it's very interesting, if you stop and think about it, that this is the only plague where the Jews had to be protected in their houses. On the other nine plagues, the Jews could be anywhere they wanted. There was no command for them to stay anywhere. They could go out and about wherever they wanted to be. There were certain plagues that did not go to Goshen. But they were not told to do anything. If any, everything was warned, it was the Egyptians like to pull their animals in. The Jews were not told to do so. The Jews could leave their animals out in the field when the, when the Egyptian animals are being killed. So why is it here with the killing of the firstborn? And the answer is that the other nine plagues that were brought on the Egyptians were really brought at, to announce God in the world, God's coming out party, if you will. They were really not done as a punishment. The only plague that was done as a punishment was Makos Bechorus, was the killing of the firstborn. And with the killing of the firstborn, since the Jews also were idol worshippers, they needed the protection. They could not be out because they too were as guilty as the Egyptians. So therefore, the only plague that was punitive, the Jews needed to be protected for. And that's why they had to be in their houses. Again, God j jumped over their houses and protected them. It says, Vimart, we have I was at, and I passed over Egypt on that day. Case of Mitzrayim, beyond Haman, I killed all the Egyptians from man until animal. Again, the animals were served, so they too had to die. So God had no choice but to Vukalo Elohei Mitzrayim Eshvatim and all the gods of Egypt I did judgment. Those idols that were metal melted down and the other ones rotted. There was no idol that was that left standing except for Palsophone where the Jews would camp at the Red Sea. And the Hashem, I am God, and it says God of mercy. And that's in interesting that the God, so the first two letters of the word of mercy to indicate severity as to when you put the Vav and the He. 
which is 11, again, what deals with the kindness that a person can do when he gives charity together, that uh, the lower form they form is 17, which is good. So something can be either tough and then we make it good or something that can be easy with like kale or lokim, which makes it difficult. And be a mart to try him and I passed to the land of Egypt. But Laila Hazeh on that day, Anibal Omalach, I and no angel, Vikisko Hamishraim, and I smote all the firstborn, Anibal Osaraf, I and no fiery angel, Vikisko Kobachar Mishraim, and I smote all the firstborn of Egypt, Anibal, again, then, Bokal Hamishraim, and all the gods of Egypt, I did judgment, Anibal Ashliach, I and no messenger, and the Hashem, was that mean, I and no one else. Now, again, why does it have to say the hey, uh, just Malak Sarf Hashliach has a hey to it. And the answer is that if you take these four, these three terms, Malak Sarf and Hashliach, and you take the first letter, it spells the name Moshe. That no human being had a hand in this plague, where the other nine plagues were done through Moshe and Aaron. The plague of the killing of the firstborn had nothing to do with any human intervention. It was done completely by the hand of God. And... Uh, we're up to, again, the uh, Yad Chazaka, the Yad Dever, the strong hand, that's the plague, as it says, the Yad Hashem, the hand of God, and your, and your cattle that are in the field, and your horses, and in your donkeys, and your camels, and your cattle, and your sheep. Dever, Kavmeida, was a very heavy plague. Now, why would Dever be, the, the, it says, uh, Yad Chazaka, strong hand? The answer is because the Egyptians worshipped the sheep. And this plague killed their gods, based in Israel Belsky. Also, each of the ten plagues was accompanied with some form of pestilence, based on a malbim. Also, Deborah was the fifth plague, and each plague was called the finger of God. Um, and so, Deborah was a complete was the complete five fingers, meaning like a hand, biad chazaka, with a strong hand. Also, there were five animals that were listed based on a gra, again, so the number five of the five fingers. And was around the two with an outstretched hand. So Acherev, this is the sword. Commotion um, Amar, as it says. And there was a sword that was drawn in his hand. Now, what, what do you mean a sword? That uh, this sword, there's no real sword mentioned in any of the plagues. So this refers to the civil war. That was that was fought between the firstborns and their parents. That when they that when they uh, that when they um, heard that they were going to die, they wanted their they wanted their uh, parents to let them go. But again, uh, the parents would not do so, so they rebelled against their parents, which brought about the civil war. Also, this is the sword of the angel of death, based on a medrash uh, by the Gra. Now, also the word cherub is in America, Vale of 210, since the nation of Israel and Mitzrayim in Egypt for 210 years. The Egyptians were smitten with the sword. Again, based on El Tovinch, if they, your child will ask. I think what we'll do is stop here, and we'll continue with Mora Gadol, with the great uh, uh, awe, uh, and when we continue with the Haggadah story next week. Again, thank you very much for coming. God bless, and have a good Shabbos.